What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? You know what time it is. Episode 94 in the mix, big baby. Uh, before we get started, episode 94, we got a special guest as well. Uh, I might know him from Twitter, Johnny JPEGs. Uh, I'm going to be your host today at Gaddis TV. Uh, what's going on, y'all? Uh, if you got yourself an iPhone and or an Android, do yourself a favor. Download the FTX app um, on the, uh, I guess, iPhone, Android, or Android. And um, stay up to date with the latest cryptocurrencies and NFTs. Uh, without further ado, let's get to it. All right. And uh, we are uh, live and direct. So uh, first off, uh, Johnny JPEGs want to say uh, thank you uh, for coming on. And uh, finally, like you said, kind of before we went live, we're, we're making it happen. So I appreciate it, big dog. Awesome, man. Great to be here. I know it's been a, a long road coming. We've been talking for a while and we finally made it happen. So I'm stoked. 100%. Um, basically, kind of how I, I overall found you. Honestly, I know you've been in Twitter space and things like that. Um, Honestly, I don't remember if it's the Hello Moon. Honestly, even Johnny, shout out Johnny Solano, even if it's one of those, honestly. But you're in the Twitter space, and uh, you were talking about just crypto, Twitter. I know you, I guess you said you owned a business, things like that. And I was asking, you know, what made you interested in into crypto, things of that nature of it. So it uh, got me in, intrigued in that essence of it. So um, usually how we do start it off for people that might not know who you are or just interested on who we're going to be talking to, a um, little bit of a background about yourself, just... Uh, when did you find crypto in general? Was it good old BTC back in the day? Solana's your first thing. Um, when when is when were you introduced into crypto? Sure, I'll I'll, uh, I'll take it back to uh, about 2013. I was watching TV in my office one day, and uh, I saw Bitcoin uh, kind of on the news flash, and it was around eighty dollars. And everyone was talking about it as like the future currency, and you know how degen it was, and all this other stuff. And this was kind of like you know, a few years after Occupy Wall Street had happened and like the, the recession and there's all these things were bubbling and it kind of just struck my interest. So I set up a Coinbase account and I was actually going to buy some Bitcoin back then, but uh, I had a business partner at the time and he convinced me to uh, spend about five grand on mining equipment to actually mine Bitcoin from our office instead. So we ended up spending about five Gs on mining equipment, got insanely busy with work, forgot about it returned all the mining equipment. Next thing I know, Bitcoin is like five, six hundred dollars Then like the Mt. Gox uh, thing happened. And I kind of like just kept watching it and uh, keeping tabs on it. And I think it was like 2016 or 2017 that I finally said, you know what, I've been following this long enough. There's something here to it. It's been a few years. Let me get in. And around that time, I think Bitcoin was about 800 bucks. I think Ethereum was around like 25 or 30. Litecoin was like five dollars uh, xrp was like four cents or less than that and i just started buying uh most of the the majors and just kind of accumulating and uh i was really interested in um investing in startups at that time and i really liked the idea of being able to invest in a startup and have like instant liquidity and when i saw got wind of icos i was like oh my god this is going to be huge and basically spent the next you know year or so um investing in all different kinds of icos pretty much buying and selling actively trading following the markets like 24 7 and yeah here i am uh, fast forward now i'm uh you know investing in jpegs and you know taking that knowledge from th back then and applying it to you know where we are today with um and you don't have to be, i guess too in detail like i guess exactly what I guess you do. Um, have you always, I guess, been introduced or introduced or interested into like finance, things like that? Or um, I guess just being like a business owner, um, I guess money finance is always something interested in. Or was it like, were you interested in stocks, things in that nature of it beforehand? Or what was crypto it was just that, that thing you were like, you know what, let me see what's going on with it. I mean, if you ask my family, they'll tell you like I've, since I was since a young age, I've been all business all the time. Like I remember coming home from school when I was like in my early teenage years and just like turning on like MSNBC or CNBC and just like watching the markets and like playing on Yahoo finance and like, you know, faux day trading and stuff like that. I was just very intrigued in in public markets. And if you had asked me like when I was younger, like what, what I want to be when I grew up, it wasn't like a, you know, an astronaut or a firefighter or whatever. It was like, oh, I want to be a stockbroker. It was just weird. Like I was just young and just very intrigued by business. And that kind of led me to um, find my entrepreneurial kind of uh, path very early on. 
And I started my first company in college, which was a CPG business. It was a specialty food company. We, we were one of the first, like, all-natural, um, no high-fructose corn syrup, gluten-free uh, condiment lines to hit the national market. This is like, 15-plus years ago. Um, within, like, two and a half years, I was in over 15,000 stores, and I self-funded that with about $10,000. We were in, like, Walmart and Safeway and Publix and Kroger's, and that was, like, my first big entrepreneurial splash where I was, like, you know, on TV and newspapers, magazines, and all that kind of stuff. And I ran that to the recession. And um, in about 2010, I transitioned out of that business. Spent a year trying to figure out what my next venture was going to be. And I was really inspired by technology. And I decided to uh, start a company called Agency Labs, which is a full stack technology studio. And we um, are all US based, very senior, a uh, team of very senior engineers and technologists that collaborate with like large global design uh, and creative agencies and also large corporate in-house teams to build like all open source software. Um, it could be like, you know, enterprise websites, mobile apps, or even like custom applications, like you name it, end to end. And we've been doing that for 10 years now. And being in that technology space is really what, what kind of opened my eyes to, to crypto because it was very much top of mind for me when that was all hitting early on. Nice. Question, um, honestly, I'm kind of curious, and I guess, I mean, some people do the, the Google stuff. Uh, I mean, instead of being on TV, everything like that, but uh i'm listening up. i watch shark tank you know what i mean so i heard walmart's hard as hell to get in you said it was a good couple i guess years ago um again you don't have to i guess dox yourself in that essence of it um like it, for someone who's like hell i want to start a business i'm trying to get into walmart in general we're not even talking crypto and stuff how, how how do those steps go into place is it just you know making sure you have your one your product is actually good enough in that essence of it or realistically is it you know it's all about who you know to an extent or how how did that stuff startup as a young age because that had been a, a huge just personal like self booster motivation and just not cockiness but in the same as like bro like i can't get this done um but what were those thoughts as as being a, a first-time business owner i guess in that capacity what, what what did you learn in that sure um let me unpack that a little bit so i got you um so I was young and like super naive when I started that business. I was in my, I was like 20 or 21 and I was someone that loved the challenge and loved the diversity. Uh, you know, one, one advisor mentioned to me, he's like, you know, you're the kind of person that can, you know, you know, scale tall buildings in a single bound. Like you see a goal and like you just like go after it head down. And if you tell me no, like that's like the, that's like rocket fuel for me. And everyone told me that, Hey, you know, it's going to cost you millions of dollars to build a brand. It's going to take you years upon years to do it. You know, you're not going to make it, you know, good luck. And at that time, like being a young entrepreneur wasn't as cool or sexy as it is, you know, nowadays. Like back then, you know, someone who was young and entrepreneur, like you were unemployed and it was a cute thing. And then, you know, the the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world and, you know, all those, you know, kind of really glorified it and opened the, 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 the floodgates for a lot of other young entrepreneurs. So I, I kind of use that entrepreneurial story to my advantage. Uh, that I was building. I had a great product. I had a great, you know, market that I was going after. Um, you know, my, my vision for, for the, the company was to um, f find a category within the grocery store aisle that was under service that could allow me to penetrate the national market. And once I was able to do that, I was going to turn into a brand factory and basically leverage that national distribution and, and be a, become a brand house, and just funnel brands through this national retail network. And the, the barbecue sauce category was like so like underutilized, like the, the best barbecue sauce in the market at the time was like craft barbecue sauce. Like there was nothing there. So I really hit that stride there. And that allowed me to just, um, you know, expand nationally. And, I, and I, basically I would go after all the large national accounts because my, my thought process was I can spend like the next year knocking on every small mom and pop grocery store across the country or I could focus my efforts on 10 or 25 of the leading grocery stores and just hammer them and get, and get FaceTime. And that's what I did. And I leveraged that national um, acceptance to get national distribution to these third party distributors. And that allowed me to negotiate like pretty, you know, optimal um, manufacturing agreements. So it was like a top down approach and I leveraged that. And I don't know how it happened. It was kind of just became natural for me and I jumped into it. And next thing I know, you know, I probably got around $3 million in slotting allowances. That's how much you pay to get on a store shelf. Um, I didn't pay any. And quick, a lot of it was... Quick question for first. Yeah. And I think you kind of mentioned on that. You said 
uh, sliding allowances. That's for, I guess, what, what you can put on the um, the shelves. Is that what you said? Is that what it is? I don't, honestly, I don't know what it is. So I'm sure other people ask. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, so slight okay. allowances, that's the, the free cases or like the actual dollars you have to give to a retailer to get onto their store shelves. Heard that. Appreciate it. And it's exp- it, it, it's fucking expensive. I mean, they they it's like almost like legalized extortion. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you, and you got that, you said, free, like w- w- within a negotiation and, and leveraging it like that? Or I, I know I cut you off, so I apologize. But, um, no, no, it's street. all good. Like, So there were, there's a few things. I got in for free. I got in because I had a product that was really innovating in the category, even though it was like condiments. And I was leveraging social media early on. So I was, I, I had a, this uh, persona on MySpace called Johnny Q Barbecue. Um, now I'm Johnny JPEGs, go figure, um, on Twitter. But I had like half a million followers and I was like one of the first like brands to, to leverage MySpace to promote a product. It wasn't just like a, a musician. I wasn't a musician or an artist or an entertainer. And basically what I would do is I would use MySpace to, tar- to, to geo-target regions of the country where my products were being featured. And I would piggyback that with radio spots and TV ads. So we would kind of flood that market with exposure. And that's what, what would help me kind of market. And, you know, social media wasn't social media back then, but I kind of figured that out. And I, I, retailers love that shit. They're like, oh, my God, this is amazing marketing. We want that. So that was my big competitive advantage early on was kind of leveraging social media before it was social media. Question on that, because um, I don't have a similar story at all. And to an extent, I had that feeling near like, you know, like the social medias. This is probably like 20 fucking 15. So before that, but uh, a <laughs> restaurant I used to work in and I went like Twitter or no, no Instagram phrase came out. I was like, bro, just have people take a picture of it. Use the hashtag. Like, they'll, they'll win something. It would win like uh, something that cost a restaurant like 30 cents, 60 cents. And then, more than likely, they're going to go spend something else, and it's just things like that. But they're like, ah, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. A couple of years down the road, you know, my buddy owns a shop. He's like, hey, man, remember that thing you used to say? Everyone's doing it. I'm like, you know, I thought I was crazy. Um, <laughs> when when did, I guess, when, when did it click to you, like, I guess with the MySpace, because you said it was one of the first ones. When did it click, like, hey, this, I guess, the social media, the internet at that time is something that, that can be useful from there? Because um, I think you said, like, other than that, it was just music, people getting the artist out like that. Um, what what gave you the knowledge, I guess, to, like you said, use the radio stations, geographical locations on that way? Have you always been a analytical, honestly, smart person like that? Or, I mean, I guess, is that always, is, is that, is that your, is that your fun, honestly? Like, is that, is that your, is that your, your, your meat and potatoes? I mean, I like to experiment and try things. Um, I think certain things just click for me. Like, I don't know, that's the way my mind works. And that made sense for me. And as I started trying it and people started like crazy engagement out of it, you know, we would do like promotional parties in certain regions. We'd get like 500 people rolling through. We had like um, this like Johnny Q barbecue Tuesdays, which was like a wing night at like large like events. And it would just be loaded with people. And I was like, wow, there's something to this. And I just took that and just blew it out in other regions where we were and just traveled the country and had a blast. Nice. So, you know, you do the businesses, you, you, you know, kind of dabble into, um, I remember when LTC was popping a little bit more than it is now, but we dabble into those. <laughs> um, when, when did you get, I guess, intrigued, introduced into NFTs? Was it uh, Solana base? Was it uh, Ethereum? How do, do you know that story? How it was boom first there, that, that first NFT, that first, no matter if it's a first flip, good flip, or like uh, one of those communities you yeah, I mean, I um, so I I missed the entire Ethereum wave. I thought like a lot of people like NFTs were bullshit. It was just like right click, uh, paste, you know, all that kind of jazz. Like I was like, nah, this isn't gonna go anywhere. I I poo pooed it big time, and next thing I know, I see the market just like going crazy. And I was even I was even just like fading even more. I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. This is like a you know total cash grab. It's a bubble. All that bullshit. And then I was like, you know what? After a while, I was like, there's something to this. And I was very early in Solana. And I knew that um, this was going back a few years. I knew that Solana was eventually going to become like a, a, a top um, crypto project. And I knew they were following Ethereum's playbook. So when I saw uh, Ethereum NFTs take off and the utility that NFTs create in the transaction volume, 
I was like, you know what, what's the next blockchain that's going to do this? Cause I don't want to miss it again. So last summer I was like, you know what, looking at the, the, the volume and the ecosystems and the vibrance of the communities and it was Solana. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to double down on uh, back on Solana. And I just started to like, you know, just really messing around, um, doing a bunch of DJ mints, just kind of, you know, getting a feel for it. Um, I started minting stuff in like September I think the, the the first actual mint that I did that really took off was Stoned Ape Crew. And I, I had a, a bag of that and then, you know, wrote it all the way up to like, you know, where it was early on this year, like 125 or so. And I sold. Um, and basically, like, I just kept investing more money into, into blue chips and just accumulating and then, you know, sweeping a lot of communities, building up and very actively trading. Uh, mostly, you know, on one side, it was like investing on the other side, it was really just helping the ecosystem. Uh, it was my way of like helping out, you know, young projects and also mentoring founders and advising founders. Uh, and I really enjoyed that immensely. And I thought to myself, you know what, I want to build a brand around myself. And that's where I kind of evolve my personal account. So I'm fully docs. My name is Jonathan Soares. Um, I'm very open about that. But I, I kind of transitioned my original Twitter account to Johnny JPEGs. So I wanted to double down on NFTs and the ecosystem and kind of create that personality. Uh, because if I thought that NFTs were going to go where I thought they were going to go, I wanted to see it at that table. And I wanted, to be, I wanted to personally be a part of those conversations um, to help the ecosystem grow and evolve and really get to its full potential. Uh, I love it. With, I guess with the, I don't understand, but I'll ask, because I, I, I haven't really dabbled with stock script as my first kind of, stock and that is stuff again no it's not stocks more volatile x y and z blah 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 not blah 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 but you know what i'm saying but is it for the person that's not in crypto yet or maybe he's been on the fence thinking either crypto or jpegs um for the i guess not financial advice of course but for the person who wants to think about flipping i guess how do you think about i guess like stocks and or the crypto and um nfts kind of the same as I guess certain fundamental basis from stocks or are those two different things or do you correlate certain things from, from that knowledge or how, or does that help knowing, knowing that, or is that just discipline on, on not getting emotionally attached and saying, Hey, they got to go. I got to go. So I would say for the past six years, most of my trading has been exclusively in crypto. I've been out of public equities and, and stock trading. Um, I really enjoy the crypto markets and I follow them so diligently that I just understand and I get them. I would say anyone who wants to get into that, like I love giving financial advice. That whole NFA stuff is just bullshit. We're all giving advice and shilling all day long. So whether you swing one way or another, you know, everyone's giving advice. So I don't mind that. Um, I would say getting into crypto now is a lot better than getting into it when BTC was $65,000. Um, so this is a great area for people that are curious to experiment. I would say if you're looking to get into NFTs, it's a great hedge on the markets. And I think that the, the, the overall markets are going to be very choppy as they kind of, you know, find their floor. And we kind of start to pull out of this, this bear market uh, whenever that does happen. And that is an, a, a timeline where NFTs tend to flourish when markets are choppy. One mistake that I made early on was that I, 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 I just accumulated a lot of NFTs and I spread my bag very wide instead of like focusing on you know, just very, very um, uh, established blue chips early on. I eventually got there where I just started like aping into a lot of blue chip projects. But I would say if I had done that sooner rather than later, um, I would be even further along, um, even though I've, I've done pretty well with the NFT market. So I would say just come up with a strategy. Don't get emotional and uh, stick to your guns. And if it doesn't work, um, you know, don't hold on to something in principle because th there's always a 5 or 10x out there so if you're down 50% on something or 25%, you know, you don't have to hold it to, to recoup that, you know, look for your next target and just move, move forward. No, I like it. Um, what do you think? And you might not be able to answer this exactly on here, but uh, cause I know before any, you were saying, you know, your, your parents are always were saying, Hey, you're always looking at numbers. You know, love the numbers like that. Um, well, I guess, what do your, what do your parents think about the crypto scene and slash like, do they know you, you're buying, you know, S&B monkeys or other, you know, I think yeah, I saw you had a pesky penguin at one time. Do they know you're buying JPEG, stuff like that? Or are they just like, whatever, son, you're smiling, like, do your thing. Like, what do they have thoughts on on the whole crypto scene or um, <laughs> do you ever talk about it? 
Yeah, I mean, we we talk about it. It's kind of over their head. They're they're a bit old. They're a bit old school. Um, they know that I've been in crypto for I mean, God knows how long. Um, and it's funny. So like this past like bull market, I think BTC was around like sixty or sixty four thousand dollars. And I've been telling them, oh, you guys should you know buy a little bit. You know, when it was like a thousand, when it was twenty five hundred, when it was five thousand, when it was ten thousand. So they met with a friend of theirs from their church. That's like a financial advisor. And he told them when Bitcoin was like 64,000, that it was a great time to buy. (laughs) And I was like, I was so like fuming. I was like, I've been telling you for how long? And you guys literally want to ask me about buying the the absolute top. And it was a good laugh and they didn't, they didn't buy, but like, um, they kind of like, uh, you know, just roll their eyes at it. And then when they see how many, like I've like even like pesky penguins. Like I have a lot of pesky penguins. If they saw like the amount of like NFTs that I had, I think they'd they'd probably tell me to uh to go talk to somebody. But uh, we we on? <laughs> we keep it at an arm's length with the parents. No, for sure, for sure. Um, with the um, I'm gonna ask the question. I mean, hopefully people won't listen and just try and I guess tailor to you. But I mean, fucking they can tailor to whoever. What what makes you I guess interested in in like a project, an NFT project? Um in that essence of it and i guess with with being nfts you know a big thing is is honestly community um was there like a i guess when when did you know there's communities in nfts you know what i mean not exactly i guess a certain one but um was it a certain i guess community that was like hey like this is more than just dgens on the computer doing these things like it's, it's actually a community um that have you i guess what was that first community like do you remember do you know what it was or yeah i would definitely say early on like very early on it was uh stoned ape crew like they were they were one of the first projects that really had i think they had like a three or four person team out of the gate you know one they had like a, a team lead they had like a their one of the founders was a designer one was a developer um and they had another person that, that were involved and that to me like you know i love investing in people first and foremost so when you have like a team and you have like a thorough roadmap and you have a good sense of like what your vision is, that to me says there's a lot of credibility around the project. And, and, and if you look at most of the blue chip projects that exist today, I would say they all have that component. Like if you look at, at D gods, you have Frank and you have like four other folks that are around him that are, you know, build, helping him as his founders, of, you know, build and scale D gods, Kelly and a whale, same thing. Foxes, same thing. I mean, th- there's teams that are, heavily invested in the space. They're contributing to the space. They're very vocal. I would say in this current climate, the projects that are going to be more successful, the ones that really get my attention are the ones that are active on, on Twitter and on spaces. I think most uh, project founders and teams kind of insulate themselves in Discord, and it's actually working against them because it's very much like out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I would say that's one of the things that really kind of get you know gets my attention. Uh, but aside from that, like I don't really mint. Um, I'm really just looking at you know teams that 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 are promising and you know uh, good entries because I do I do kind of apply kind of technical analysis to my trading too, and I'm very much like looking at like NFT charts and and all that. So it, it's kind of a mixed bag of how I'm analyzing a lot of my positions. No, that's what's up. You got Hello Moon on the second screen with the analytics on there and everything else. Um, with with uh, honestly like with nfts in in general like like where do you think um nfts are going to be going like to it doesn't matter if it's like these particular you know you know jpegs on here but like where do you think the long haul in you know the 5 10 15 years where do you think nfts are are going to be like what do you think the the nft is i mean it's going to be the same thing but like how do you think the use case is going to be i think 10 to 15 years out is that, I mean, that's really far out. I think though the world is going to be drastically different um, at that next point. I would years. say yeah, next three years is much better. I'll just love <laughs> that. Uh, so next three years, I mean, if you look at like Ethereum, like Ethereum has done, I think $65 billion in NFT transaction volume. Solana has only done 3 billion. Mm-hmm. So we're incredibly early and we haven't seen the brand adoption in Solana. We haven't really seen like enterprise adoption. There's a lot of things that have happened within um, the Ethereum ecosystem that were st- are still very you know uh, early for for our ecosystem. So I think that the next the next stage is what we're going to see is we're going to see probably a very prolific bull run that's going to put Solana on the map. Um, it's going to get a lot of eyes and attention on the ecosystem. You're going to see a lot of 
brands and corporations, media outfits. You're going to see Hollywood and celebrities, you know, jumping on board and it's going to hype it up even more. And you're going to see a lot of that happening within the space. Uh, and I think eventually um, what's going to blossom out of that is something that's akin to Solana and, and the nature of the, of the blockchain is it's going to open up a lot more abilities for, for developers, projects, and teams to really get creative and contribute to the ecosystem. And I think it's not just like staking and minting platforms, but I think it's like bigger picture ideas. It's like, you know, fractionalizing real world assets and like, you know, large commercial real estate NFT, like things that are like so far out of people's minds and they're not sexy today. But like when they're moving like tens of millions of dollars in transaction volume, I think it's going to raise a lot of eyebrows and it's going to be a much more sophisticated market. I don't know if that's before or after regulation. Um, regulation on NFTs is kind of suspect at this point. Um, but I do think that there has to be a bull cycle and uh, a maturity cycle that we have to experience. And we're very far off from that. And I'm excited to experience it. And I was going to kind of ask kind of, a, I guess, a, a carry on on that one with, is that kind of what gets you excited with, um, like, I guess the, the future of NFTs, like you said, either the fractionalization of, um, it could be like a, a Michael Jordan basketball, something like that, have it done there. Or like you said, like with, with the property, things in that nature of it. I was in the spaces, um, I forget the exact project. I was thinking about trying to reach out to them just to, I love knowledge, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be the first one to say I'm not the smartest one in the room. I don't want to be, but I definitely want to learn, you know what I mean? Um, but I guess, is that what excites you in that essence of it, where it's going to be like the real real world use like later down the line like like in either if it's like you know the loans are collateral on you know the, the monkey business and you're trying to buy a car things like that or do you think thing, things in that nature of it are are possible and maybe within the next three years things like that or um extra question because i'm prolonging it on there i was on no, another I podcast and they were like it's gonna be like tickets you know what i mean like this is gonna instead of a, a football ticket it's gonna be hey an nft ticket and that gets you the access to that and things in that nature of it like where do you think that that's where it's going to, or is it just like, what, what do you think the biggest change is going to be? Like looking back on the podcast, you're like, man, it was like that social media shit. I knew it. You know, what, what do you, I guess, what do you think? I definitely think, uh, ticketing is going to be huge, especially since, uh, Solana, you know, when it's, when it's at, when it's fully optimized, I think it's going to, it's going to handle a lot of transactions per second. Um, and the, how inexpensive it is going to make it really easy for large brands to jump into the ecosystem and use it for their ticketing or like loyalty programs and reward programs. So that's like that, that that's inevitable in my opinion. And, wh and when I see that happening, that to me is like, oh, we've made it. Um, the other stuff like leveraging DeFi with NFTs, you know, you, you highlight a handful of things of like leveraging like your NFT portfolio from a lending perspective. I, that's all like within the realm of possibility. I do think that for that to happen, there has to be a lot more liquidity in the market um, just so that there's more price stability and, it, and, and it's, it's less it's less risk for people to be able to actually do that and for large, larger players to get involved to that degree. So that comes with the maturity of the ecosystem. Uh, in regards to like the bigger pick, like, like stuff like fraction, like, so one of my clients, so my company agency labs, we work with a, um, a large company called Brookfield Asset Management. They manage about half a trillion dollars and we do a development for them globally. And they have a, a ton, they own a ton, most like the major real, they own like 50% of New York city. I mean, like they own like most of the major buildings globally. Like nice. when I see a company like that and they're like, all right, we have a pool of like, here's a, here's a half a billion dollar pool of assets. And we want to be able to fractionalize that. And you're not pegging it against Solana or Ethereum because you have these crazy price swings, but you're, pre you're, you're pegging it against USDC. So you're using blockchain technology to fractionalize this and it's represented as an NFT. When I see like ideas like that happening or people talking about them, that gets me excited. And that's what I want to see our ecosystem evolve to. No, I'm not 100%. I'm, I'm sure anyone would be excited on that because, of course, you know, in the essence of money, that'd be a lot more money coming in. Um, I'll ask a money question because, uh, I mean, again, I don't know the finances, anything like that. Um, say all that does happen, you know, in next year, you know, the, your, the company you're working with says, hey, guys, we got, you know, trillion dollars we're going to put in the account. And the, the mom and pop who's like, hey, man, I'm, I've been investing 10 bucks, 10, 20 bucks. And again, I guess a financial-ish question, just on your, your opinion. Like how, I guess, I'm trying to think of the question. Like how, 
how, how do people stay stay true if they just come into like a, a lump sum of money you know what i mean what what would your i guess advice be if it was like hey you know like because i'm pretty sure i heard it was if like ethereum or no if solana market caps the same as ethereum like solana is like a thousand dollars you know per coin which the people here if you're buying it at 40 my life would be changed you know what i mean so like what advice would you give i guess someone that makes it in the in the nft world just being a business owner and someone that may or may not have made money in in crypto what advice would you say with that so if you if you compare the nft the nft market to the ico cycle the the whole purpose of like icos was to stack ethereum and bitcoin that's that's the entire purpose was like invest what you can and stack that eth and btc I think with uh, Solana um, and even like Ethereum, like NFT markets, like the, the main purpose of those ecosystems are to stack as much ETH as you can and to stack as much SOL as you can. So right now, like my goal with, with my, well, my investment strategy is to, is to position myself so that I can, you know, accumulate as much Solana as possible. Because I do think that, you know, once we experience this, like maybe first bull run, um, that's going to be before Solana really runs. And I do think that um, it, we will see Solana within the next several years in the 800 to $1,000 range. If it was to get to Ethereum's all-time high, I believe that would be about $1,450 per soul. Um, so, I mean, with all respect, I got to stop. You say about me. You might, you done the numbers, big dog. You're like about 1403 cents. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give or take a couple dollars. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. No, no. Um, I, I just had this conversation like yesterday with somebody. I was actually like bad. doing the math. No, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fresh in mind. But like, but yeah, dude, like that's if, if we go after ETH, like, I would say, uh, yeah, we'd be right around that range. I mean, that, that's a tall order. I don't know if that's like this next wave or the wave after that, because if you look at Ethereum, like you had several waves before it actually hit 1,500 and then 4,000. So just something to keep in mind and keep tabs on. But I would say, yeah, stack as much soul and then flip your NFTs to soul and then ride up soul um, and then flip that to USDC. And then you're going to stack your stack and stack it and stack it even more. I read that. That's 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 overall play heard um with um i guess so honestly like some some advice for some of the people that would be coming in just looking into uh projects from from the outside because i'm pretty sure um i don't think you said you like advised on projects but you you were i guess kind of helping advising some things um what advice would you give the the new person coming into the space to to look for and to in i guess in, in the nfc world and projects um is it I know for the brand new people that might be looking at, hey, they got, you know, they just made the account in March and they got 200,000 followers. Like, is it followers? Is it going into to discords? Or I guess, what would your advice be in that essence of it? Because I know you said you're not always buying. So if you're not always doing it, like, you don't have to make something yeah. up. But what, what would you say yeah. to the person coming in? I would say um, get a feel for the space. Um, don't dive in, like, head first or don't FOMO in. Like, do your research. Um jump into discord ask questions you know reach out to project founders you know get a feel for for their community what their roadmap is and dabble and i would say combine that with with some ta you know if you know that you know go on soul sniper um that's a great resource um hop on twitter spaces hear some of these amas of projects talking and then from there, you'll slowly kind of establish yourself, and 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 then from and then start experimenting, and and buying, and then when you feel comfortable, you know, double down when you have more conviction. But it's something that you know you just have to, you kind of have to jump in head first, but you want to do it in a calculated fashion, and that just comes with consuming yourself within the Solana NFT community. No, hundred percent. With um, the last couple of questions, I'm gonna take the time we're at thirty five minutes, so uh. I'm not going to keep you for too, too much longer because, uh, like I said, 45 minutes-ish on there. I usually go an hour, but I'm like, yo, let me, let me, let me chill up for a second. Um, with the, uh, the, the NFTs, I just had, had my misplaced my thought on it, looking at the time, trying to be all, all responsible on that one. It's um, <laughs> all good, man. I don't know. I'll come back to you. I'm sure it'll come back with it on there. Um, on the, honestly, like with the, the projects you've, you've had i mean when, when i first came into uh um i guess solana like my, my first mint in journal was honestly the thugbird uh, that's why I, and how i started the podcast and that in essence of it i was like hey i want to 
greatly value because when I, you know, first got into the scene, my buddy, uh, maybe not like you, but he, he knew of Solana. He, he, he loves saying, he's like, bro, Sam is the shit. Like, you know, and even looking back, he's like, man, I should have listened to myself buying some more at that time. But uh, same way on that one, I saw him flip a JPEG and I was like, bro, the fuck just happened? You know what I mean? Like, I'm over here trying to, you know, I ain't the richest person. Trying, you know, trying to get a hundred bucks flipped to like three dollars. I'm like, yo, man, I made 10 bucks a day. What's up? But um, so I, I was going about looking in, you know, hey, what what makes a JPEG, you know, NFT like worth it? And it was, you know, SMBs had um, a, a whole bunch of knowledge, like honestly, Smart people from what I read, I don't got SMB, so I don't know in there. But the community, smart people based there, same with the Boogles. Um, I guess what things have have you learned? Because you're a smart person, but I guess what what advice, what things have you learned from other people in the space um, that maybe you didn't know before? Um, that what was a light bulb that which you you wish you would have known beforehand? In general. One of the things that I learned, you know, just especially being in a lot of these like Twitter spaces and doing these AMAs is to put yourself out there. Um, I think everyone in their own, in their own way contributes to the ecosystem. And for a while, like I was kind of like hiding behind the scenes and just like sweeping floors and investing and like kind of doing my thing. And I always wanted to like voice some of my knowledge and talk to other smart people. And it wasn't until I actually put myself out there and said, you know what, let me just start talking to people live. And then, you know, that opened the door and then that allowed me to build up some great relationships and then opened me up to other communities. And from there it was just like more and more conversations that even led to like in real life meetings. And it was just like a, a domino effect. So my, my, my path and my journey, you know, has evolved several times and it's iterated several times. And I think just like trusting the process and going through the motions and being able to be nimble and flexible as the ecosystem and the market changes. Um, that's the, the best thing that, that I learned, you know, since the early days of Solana flipping JPEGs. I'm tired of that. No, I like is a lot of people we, we've had on, doesn't matter if it's projects, artists, honestly, people like yourself, they, they honestly say, you know, in the Twitter space is uh, not a have to, but it can be very important for things like that. Just putting yourself out there talking even listening things in that nature of it um personal question with, with you being a business owner you know successful in that essence of it um was it hard to honestly like click the, the the request button like all right let me let me get on there was it a, a kind of a a self-struggle for the people because you know, i'll be honest sometimes i'll be in the twitter space i'm like fuck and then i'm like my problem on episode 94 over here like i can just click it but like was that ever a uh, a, a struggle in that essence of it or for the person that's has the phone and just like, I, I don't know what, what would you say? Was it, was it like that for you or was it just the, uh, effort in your system and you just went, what would you say? For the yeah. Person it just, it's just like, fuck it. Let's ride. Like what would everyone say? Like shoot your shot. Mm -hmm. You just have to put yourself out there and just get comfortable. Cause after a while, like it, it just becomes like second nature. You don't even think about like, Oh, there's like 500 or a thousand people in the audience. It's just like having a fun conversation with, you know, like-minded people. Sometimes it's shit talking. Sometimes you're breaking balls. Sometimes you're kind of being serious. It, it just, it's just, it's a very natural flow um, that you, that you build over time and you find your own voice. I think a lot of people try very hard to like be really funny or like be edgy and be this and be that. It's like, nah, just be yourself. Like find what's natural to you. And that's, what's going to resonate with a lot of people. No, I love it. Um, the last couple of questions and we'll wrap it up. Um, is there, I guess, anything that you are working on either in the web three, web two world that, um, you want to, I guess let people know about that you're working on, or you just kind of enjoying the crazy bear market and things like that. Or, um, do you personally have anything you, you're working on or with? So I would say we've got some stuff in stealth mode. So my, my dev team, um, has been, pretty much taking a deep dive on Solana and learning Rust um, the past uh, six months, just like experimenting and dabbling in between like client projects. And we have a couple like internal like skunk work applications that we're going to be building. One of them is like a, is a pretty advanced like portfolio and analytics tracker um, that I kind of like designed for myself just to manage like multiple wallets and multiple accounts. Cause a lot of the portfolio trackers are really more conducive for smaller accounts. So for like whales and stuff, it, there's nothing that really kind of helps you track like lar larger portfolios um, with multiple positions. 
So I'm, we're building that out and experimenting. And we've got some other stuff that we're doing some research on and just trying to figure out like how we can add value to the ecosystem. Because I, I do see a lot on the Solana side, but also too, like I have like a successful Web2 business that I'm protecting and nurturing and I don't want to lose focus on that. So really it's a balance. Like I don't need NFTs or soul personally. I, I do it because I love it and I, and I enjoy the community. So if I can add some value with my team uh, from a development perspective, you know, we're going to do that when the time's right. And, you know, not really push that because to me, like that'd be just like cash grab. And I don't want to be that kind of person or have that kind of reputation. So we're just kind of doing our thing and having fun. No, I strongly like it. Um, what, what would you think? Uh, I guess what, what are the biggest struggles, honestly, from from having a, a Web2 business and I guess being in the Web3 world for maybe someone that will be listening that has a Web2, you know, honestly, business, you know what I mean? How? How do you keep those, I guess, tight? Is it just honestly, uh, you know, time management in that essence of it? Either, hey, you're good at time management or you're not. Or is it, is it like you see on the Twitter spaces, like as much as Web2 is like your main bread and butter, everything like that, like do you still see yourself on Twitter or just the DJ nights, things like that? How do you, how, how do you correlate? How do you make sure both are, are focused in, in their own way? Sure. So like that's I asked myself. I asked myself. My wife asked me that all the time. She's doing? like, like it's three o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? Like it's nine o'clock at night. Why, why are you talking to guests? Uh, no, it's a uh, <laughs> a lot of it is is uh, it's just time. It's 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 time management. I do a bad job of time management, and I've generally been focused on kind of being better at that. So the past few months, I've been kind of scaling back a little bit because I was like on Twitter spaces like every other night to like two, three o'clock in the morning. It was just a grind. It was way too much. Uh, I'm the kind of person that when I jump into something, like I go all in and I go heavy. And I did that with, with NFTs and I consume myself with it. And I love it because it interests me. It's kind of like my, <laughs> that's, that's my vice with ADHD. It's like, you know, you find that shiny new object and you just like double, triple down on it. So I would say um, time management is super important. Um, and just be patient. Like, you know, I, I follow it, the markets way too closely. I don't need to. A lot of this stuff it, it will be like set it and forget it. But for the most part, like, you know, things do change quickly. So you have to be, you know, on the pulse of the ecosystem. Um, so I would say with balance, just, uh, you know, get involved and, and have fun. It's tough though with like a Web2 business because like, you know, I have like a lot of enterprise clients and <laughs> they know that like I'm, I'm into entities and they're, they're starting to ask me a lot of questions. But for a while, like they were kind of laughing like, oh, here comes Johnny JPEGs. And I'm like, all right, yeah, laugh now. And they're like, oh, um, shit, yo, it's Johnny JPEGs. <laughs> <laughs> yo, hey, man, hey, remember? I'm Web2. Here he is. Weirdo. Right? Oh, I love it. Um, but yeah, man, it's like it, that, 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 that all comes with, with the territory. But it's something that now like, Again, my, my whole thing here was like, I want to establish myself as a thought leader, both to contribute to the ecosystem and I want to be the guy that a lot of these enterprise clients come to when they want to bridge the, the web two to web three gap with their companies. How do we expose ourselves to NFTs or how do we expose ourselves to blockchain technology? Like I want to position myself or brand myself to be that, that person or someone that knows those people that can bring them into the conversation. And that's really is like my, my true intention. Like, do 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 I think like um, launching an NFT project is is great? Yeah, I mean to me that's low hanging fruit. Like, do I want to work with like a large global Fortune 500 company and you know have a, a you know multi million dollar project with them that I can help them build something? That to me is more exciting for me because that's where you're adding really tangible value. Um, but again, that boils down to like, hey, you know, what's sexier? Like, is it the service business or is it like the product business? And to me, like the service business has never steered me wrong. So I'm trying to like temper my excitement of like building something with like staying true to our values and just like being patient and waiting for the right opportunity. Awesome. No, man, I, I love it. Um, on, on, on that note, I mean, we're right at the, the 40, 45 minute note, uh, note minute there on, on there. Um, so I mean I'll go ahead and wrap it up again. I won't I won't take too much of your time. I don't know if your wife's you know giving you an evil eye over there. If I'm pretty sure you got a no. kid. I don't know how many, but uh, hopefully they're not screaming for food and you know I'm I'm, I'm stopping them from eating. So um, I, I do appreciate good. you uh, for coming on um, again, man. I'm, I'm thankful we did have it, um, and I, I really have enjoyed the conversation. So I appreciate it, bro. 
Yeah, man, I appreciate your patience. I'm glad we finally got to, got to do this. It's definitely been a long road coming, and I had a blast. So thank you for the opportunity, man. Really appreciate it. Right, not a problem at all. Um, stick around for a quick second. I'm going to go ahead and kind of end it how I started it. But um, I guess before we end it, where, where can people find you on, on Twitter? Where, where, where your handle's at? Shout yourself out. Sure. You can follow me at uh, the Johnny JPEGs, and uh, you can check out uh, my in real life business, agencylabs.com. Uh, pretty accessible. DMs are always open. Hit me up anytime. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, stick around for a quick second. I'll be right back. But uh, again, man, I appreciate you for coming on. Thanks, man. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, once again, episode 94 in the mix, big baby. Shout out Johnny JPEGs for coming on, tuning in and showing some love. As always, I know financial advice, but hopefully uh, we're, uh, we're learning around here. So as always, y'all stay fresh, stay clean, stay positive. And one more time, y'all. Cuckoo!